Hello friends, it's DJ Rachel. So excited to be talking to you here on DJN TV. With things starting to open up across the country, I figured this would be a perfect time to talk about getting back in the saddle, getting back behind those decks, and making sure that we're putting our best foot forward when we're finally able to get back to doing what we love. Over the past year, we obviously had a lot of downtime, and it was amazing to see so many of you use that downtime to your advantage. Finally, checking things off that list that we always said we never had time for or were procrastinating on. From streaming on Twitch to revamping a website or even reorganizing a hard drive, DJs were using this downtime to make sure that when things opened up, they were going to be better than ever. All of those things are great, but there's one thing that every DJ should be doing right now before getting back to work, and that is drum roll evaluating your backup plan. Basically anyone can show up to an event and play music, but executing that event seamlessly from start to finish with confidence is what's going to set you apart as a true event professional and event host. A big part of that confidence and seamless execution comes from having a solid backup plan. The saying goes, a professional is not only defined by the things they do right, but how they handle the situation when things go wrong. Most of us know that hope is not a backup plan, or at least not a very good one. And I think we all can agree that we need backup plans. And I don't think that that's the issue here. I believe the majority of us actually have a backup plan in mind. What I wanna discuss is the less tangible ideas. I think we all can agree that we should have an extra hard drive or thumb drive with music on it, maybe an iPad with a 30 minute mix on it to get you some time to kind of troubleshoot whatever the problem is, extra laptop, extra power cords, all the connectors, bells, whistles, things like that. No argument there. What I'm proposing is evaluating how good your plan is, how easy it is for you to execute, and how seamlessly can you go from plan A to plan B. It might sound good on paper, it might be friendly to your wallet. It might even be what your best DJ friend is currently doing themselves. But the question is, is, is it going to work for you? Or is it going to be awkward? Are you gonna bumble and fumble around? Are you going to feel comfortable in the moment? And I wanna share a story with you. It was a year ago, February, that I was rocking a club room in Hartford, Connecticut, having the time of my life when all of a sudden, my brand new Razer laptop had the blue screen of death. The laptop had given me the blue screen of death. I pulled out my emergency thumb drive, and if it wasn't for that, I would be screwed. I have a laptop that for the first time keeps rebooting. Nothing I could do to fix this thing. See, look, there we go. Thank God I had the MCX 8000. I had my flash drive right here. Engine came to save the day. The stress of this was crazy. So anyway, DJs, make sure you have your backups um, because you just never know. Luckily, I was DJing with my MCX 8000, which does have standalone mode. So once I figured out that there was a problem, I had maybe 12 to 15 seconds of dead air, I was able to pull a thumb drive out of my backpack, plug it in, and get the music back on in a pretty timely manner. I was very grateful that I had a viable backup plan, but what I didn't like is how uncomfortable I was using it. The point here is, there is no point in having a backup plan if you're not comfortable using it. So not only should you buy the gear you need and have it in your head what that plan would be, but you actually have to practice it because if you ever have to use it, it should feel almost just as natural as your preferred plan A. That experience told me that over quarantine, which happened literally a month later, that that was something that I needed to practice and master if it ever happened again. So now I know that if something goes down with the computer, that I can flip that switch and feel good about my performance and using my backup plan. Tip number one is get comfortable with your plan B. Tip number two 
is make sure that you have some DJ colleagues in your network that you can count on. And I don't think a lot of DJs give this enough thought. Typically, again, when we think of backup plans, we're thinking of extra wires and hard drives, but we're not thinking about who can support us in a time of need or a crisis. We've all been through a really crazy year, and I think now more than ever, it's important to touch base, check in with a DJ friend, or if you don't have any of those, it's time to start making some. I think sometimes we have a tendency to put up barriers, not want to communicate, reach out, and make these types of meaningful relationships. Not everyone is competition, folks. You should have three to four key people in your state or maybe in your local area that you know you could pick up the phone and call if you needed something in the moment, especially now with schedules getting jam packed because of us having to move events from 2020 to 2021. It's really good to have those types of relationships. So if people and other DJs aren't part of your backup plan, they really should be. It's so much more than just making sure we have an extra headphone connector or an extra XLR cable. We gotta think bigger than that. So start working on cultivating those relationships now, especially if you haven't touched base in a while. Just make sure you guys are on the same page and that you're still willing to help out. People are still working, they're feeling well, and that they're prepared for 2021 as well. And my third and final tip is start streamlining where you can. I've actually revamped my complete approach to my wedding ceremony setup. I realized I was making it way more complicated than it needed to be. I was bringing way more gear than I needed. I came up with a different plan, a different approach, and I'm really excited to implement this for 2021. Of course, I'm gonna be practicing it before I actually roll it out, but I decided to not use a full controller. I picked up an Electrovoice 30M that has a complete mixer on the back. I'm going to start utilizing an iPad and this Hercules Starlight controller. I want to simplify, remove as many moving parts as I can, make it easier on me because I know events are still going to be a little tricky this year. I'm prepared to be working in unique environments, backyards, smaller audiences, and just doing what I have to do to make sure the event is successful, but also easy to execute. So anywhere that I can kind of simplify and streamline my equipment and my overall process, that's my goal for 2021 and probably going forward. As I wrap up this segment, I want to acknowledge the feelings about finally getting back to work. We all can agree that we're very excited to be able to be back on dance floors again, but I'm not gonna deny the fact that there is some lingering anxiety with going back to work. That's okay, and I'm here to let you know you're not the only one. I am going through the same thing for myself. I'm very excited, but I'm also a little anxious because it's been so long since I've been able to entertain in front of a live audience. And while doing mix shows and streaming on Twitch is awesome and forces you to keep those mixing skills sharp and forces you to download new music and use that new music in sets, it's not the same as a live audience. And I don't care what anybody says, there is something very special about that energy between you and the room and the dance floor that they're dancing on. So it's perfectly normal to have a little bit anxiety about getting back to work. I know I feel that way, but I'm sure that the rust is gonna dust off real quickly. As soon as I feel that energy from my audience, I'm sure it's gonna be like riding a bike, they say. And with that, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody crush their 2021 events. Stay focused. Remember to practice. Get that plan B in place and make sure you're comfortable with it. Pick up the phone, call a DJ friend or colleague. And if you don't have any, now's time to make some. And what was the third one? How am I blanking on the third one? <laughs> oh, um... No, I still don't remember what it was now. It's okay to be anxious. We're all gonna work through it once we're back in front of our live audiences. And if you take some of my advice from this video, I'm sure you'll be even more comfortable when you're back live on the dance floor. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe, be well, and as always DJs, happy mixing.